When asked what your favorite video game is, what do you say? Maybe it's an old Call of Duty that came out years ago, since all the new ones are straight balls. Or it could be a God of War game, since those have essentially never disappointed. But when I get asked what my favorite game of all time is, the answer is always Spider-Man. I played it last year on the PC port since I hadn't yet owned a PlayStation, and I poured almost 40 hours into it in one week because I fell in love with it, almost like how Peter Parker fell in love with MJ's fatty. But today, I decided to buy it again and platinum it on the PS5 to get the full experience since this is where it originally released in 2018. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! The Spider-Man Platinum Trophy consists of 51 trophies and I decided to play through the entire game on spectacular difficulty so I could spend even more time with Spider-Man's absolutely caked up ass. Bruh. There isn't really a lot of difficult or random trophies to go after within this playthrough. In fact, this is probably one of the most fun and enjoyable Platinum Trophies you will ever get. I don't think I've ever seen a Platinum Trophy with such a high completion rate if we're being honest here. Nonetheless, we start off the main story's journey by seeing a super clean apartment, which is the Spider-Boy himself. He gets a call from his lawyer asking him where he is since they are currently taking his child visitation rights away. So in good fashion, we strap on our spandex, which has got to be shrinking our balls and sperm count, and we are sent off into the amazing city of New York. On our way to the courthouse, though, we take a pit stop at Fisk Tower to capture him because he has been doing some naughty naughty things and somehow managed to grow way more than the average person. He could probably eat me and still have room for sloppy seconds. After a very easy boss fight with some extremely hard timed button combat messages, we end up stringing him up in webs and he might die from the blood rushing to his head if the police don't hurry up and get him down. I always wondered in this game how the hell anyone gets the criminals down, because they are way out of reach and honestly super inconvenient to capture. No wonder Jameson has such a grudge against our boy Spider-Man. And not only because he shot a web into his wife last spring. Hey yo! We get a trophy for the first mission's completion and are basically set free to explore right away. But there is very limited things to do at the start. However, we can't stop crimes in each district and collect all the backpacks which spider-man left behind back in his prime high school after around an hour of web slinging around like a spider on adderall we collected like half the backpacks in the game and got a trophy i did this approach for basically every collectible just doing them right away when they're available since this game isn't very long i really wanted to try and make it less of a pain in my ass at the end by having all the side objectives relatively completed in addition to me stopping all the crimes in each district i did a perfect dodge 10 times and got the spider sensible trophy completing crimes however does not give you a trophy but you still have to do it for the 100 percent completion the only the only thing available to do this early on is to activate all the district radio towers, which basically just unlocks that part of the map and you can see any collectible or crime that is happening in them. They also act as a fast travel spot, so if MJ says she's home alone, we can zip over in an instant. I continue to stop crimes on my objective of gathering all the backpacks because the crimes are probably one of the most tedious tasks in this game's platinum trophy. And while doing so, I got another trophy for swinging fast, apparently, which is kind of silly, but whatever. Now I still had a lot of backpacks left because they are absolutely everywhere wear, but I was going super fast again while trying to get them, and I got a trophy for that also. I ended up doing all the crimes while in Central Park and got the Neighborhood Watch trophy, which is for stopping all the crimes in a district. Since Central Park has no other crime versions in the future, this popped up immediately, unlike it didn't in the other districts. Just like how MJ's eyes pop out of her head when she sees how far I can shoot my web. What did he say? On the relentless backpack grind, I also climbed to the top of the Avengers Tower to see what would happen, and I got a trophy for looking cool. Finally, after two hours of pain doing side objectives and stopping to stop crimes, I got the backpacker trophy, and was extremely relieved since that is the biggest collectible in the game with 55 different backpacks. It's kind of toxic if we're being honest to give us this as our first collectible and an introduction to the game, but not as toxic as all my personal relationships I have. Instead of finally doing the main objective that I have left completely abandoned like your parents did to you on the fire station floor mat, I went and did a side quest because, why not, it was available so I did it. And shockingly enough, it was extremely, extremely retarded. I know, a shocker. And if we are being honest, it doesn't even make sense. This girl is literally bird watching in the middle of the night. How dumb does it get when being a blonde nowadays? She's so dumb in fact that she got caught by a bunch of men in the middle of the night on top of a roof, and I'm kind of afraid of what they would have put in her if I I didn't step in. I also got a trophy for fighting them from a combat related thing. I honestly don't know what it is. And now after three hours of ignoring Yuri and the construction site, I decided to start up the main story again. Immediately we get introduced to the gadget section of this game and a trophy pops up for us buying one. I also tried to get the 100 combo trophy because earlier in the game the enemies aren't as advanced yet and they are easier to fight. So I did that pretty easily. And then I shut down the base receiving another trophy which makes three on a single mission. This is amazing. But not as amazing as the amazing Spider-Man 2 since that is the best Spider-Man movie ever. 
Once we finish that main story mission, we unlock another collectible, and this time it is a lot easier. All we have to do is take bad pictures of landmarks around the map, which I do by just flying around and snapping pictures at mock speed. Almost looking as good as a Vogue photo shoot. The other side objective we unlocked was to shut down all of Fisk's construction sites, which are just glorified drug and money laundering locations. Walter White really could have took some notes here because a car wash ain't making you that much money. Walter, you make away, Walter. I then used some skill points I got to unlock the trick ability and started to just freestyle midair, not worried about breaking my leg. Literally. Research stations are another collectible we have to do, and they actually take a while since you actually have to, you know, give effort into them and not just grab it and run away. So I didn't do them all right away, but this was mostly due to the fact that the game doesn't let you since you need specific abilities for some of them, which I don't have yet. Instead, I went to fight Shocker as he was robbing a bank for the main story. This boss fight and villain is probably the easiest and goofiest in this game. He doesn't really have a power aside from his little special gloves, and he also doesn't have much going on upstairs and should probably reach out to an autism treatment and research center. What what I'm trying to say is, he's just kind of slow with the thought process behind his actions. I then went and bought some random suits which I never wore since I always rocked the Amazing Spider-Man look since it's the coolest out there. On the next main story mission we team up with a black cop, something I didn't even know existed in this country, almost like a good white rapper. But he shocks us all and saves Spider-Man from being run over with a fast moving vehicle, with his own fast moving vehicle. And lots of people decide to record it instead of helping us since we were both in lots of pain. Typical millennials. 4K! At this point, I had enough skills to do the rest of the research station, so that is exactly what I did. These are used for buying gadget upgrades and suit upgrades, and it's also another fast travel location. The black cat, who is the actual MILF of this game, leaves us behind a lot of little puzzles to do for her collectible, and we do the first one, which gives us a trophy for some reason. I guess she liked how Spider-Man hit it and quit it with her last year. I end up just fast traveling to all of these because I don't really want to grind out a bunch of crimes right now since I've been doing all these tedious tasks all day. But I got a trophy for fast traveling in fact, which is nice. And then many, many moments later, I did all the black cat puzzles and found out she actually set us up and robbed the police station while I was out looking for her G-spot. But we did get a cool suit in return for our efforts, so we were completely blue balled. I did another collectible and collected a bunch of pigeons for a homeless man. Truly New York's finest. I purchased a lot of gadgets and then used my ultimate ability more than suggested by the game. Oh yeah, that black cop from earlier also got completely blown up and is now looking like the most normal Middle Eastern person in 2001. So we get to play as his son, which is apparently Miles Morales. Not sure how, but it is. And boy oh boy are his missions so much fun. Fun. We essentially just walk around the normal looking New York street until we get our ass kicked and get shown mercy since we are halfway to orphanhood like a true Spider-Man protagonist. A funeral happens because the dude died and Peter and Miles meet for the first time. Peter then suggests Miles should come work at a homeless shelter so he can see even less fortunate people than himself. Always a better outlet than doing hardcore drugs on the street to feel more alive. We find out that the main villain of the story is Martin Lee, and he's actually a very bad man, but he works with our aunt so there is even more division within the family structure. Aunt May is a ginger and looks very different than how I imagined her in my dreams last night. Eventually, we play as MJ again, and Lord have mercy, her missions are almost as bad as the Atreus mission from the new God of War game. You know, the one where he just runs around in a field, raising up a black chick for like 45 minutes straight? I swear to God, if there's more than three of these MJ missions in the new Spider-Man game this fall, I'm gonna lose my mind and be super sad. But we do use this as a bonding moment between Peter and MJ. Peter even sneaks his way into her apartment and almost closes the deal, but gets rushed away to go save the world some more. Martin Lee's gang is currently trying to kidnap this poor guy who has the best man bun I've ever seen in my life. So we save her, I mean him, and then the whole building f***ing blows up and everything catches on fire because it wouldn't be a superhero game without some controversy and fire everywhere. A little bit later on, we get introduced to Taskmaster, who's a funny little guy who apparently got hired to kill us from an outside source. And instead of just stalking us and doing it in our sleep or when we are with MJ, he instead decides to set up hours of tasks for us to do, which probably took a lot of effort on his part to design. So props to the man for trying so much, it really shows how he has no social life. I do all of these easily since I am a god at this game and got two trophies for doing them all and doing them all perfect. I then took a pit stop to stop a car, and got a trophy for doing lots of vehicle takedowns since I'm a pro at stopping moving vehicles with my absolute dump truck of a butt. We then got some more 
Taskmaster objectives, so I went and did all of those, getting trophies for each of them. We even got to fight him, and it was kind of a weird fight since he knew all our moves already. But still, he failed to kill us. Kind of sad on his part. This might be his 13th reason why. And then I did a series of side quests relating to Tombstone, which was who MJ has been messing around with while I've been gone. Typical woman, can't trust them with shit. So I made that son of a bitch bleed and think about where he's been putting his wiener and asked him politely to please stop. Are you crying, bro? No, bro, I'm good. Martin Lee set up a ton of warehouses for his thugs, called the Demons, quite a while ago. And I hadn't done any of them, so I went and shut them all down because I'm the only capitalist who is allowed to profit off of people's crimes in this city. The main story took a turn, and apparently it's Halloween now, so I just went to a party. But we can't ever have a nice night off, can we? The f***ing lead scientist just offs himself right in front of us. The PTSD I have is immaculate. I wanted to know why he did that and what he had been working on, so we snuck up into Oscorp since they are probably the most shady business to ever be a business. I mean, Activision is a close second, but Oscorp is literally just making chemical weapons to use on people, and they call it Devil's Breath, since it just kills you all like China tried to with COVID. There was a certain side quest I did that involved me beating up a bunch of college kids, so I did it without asking why, and they gave me a trophy. Man, I love this new day and age of everyone wanting to be anything they can dream of. It really allows for anything to happen. Soon, I'll finally be able to beat the shit out of a woman since they think they're a man now. After some more main story mumble jumble about Martin Lee continuing his quest to release the devil's breath onto the world, we do our last side quest and get the completion trophy for that. And honestly, if you think about it, this game hasn't really had any disastrous occurrences yet. Sure, we lost some pigeons and MJ has been seeing other guys, but nothing too bad. Well, 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 on the last few missions of the game, literally everything goes to shit. On this mission, both the Raft and Rikers get completely overrun, and every single prisoner, villain, and EDP get let loose into the streets. I even got gangbanged by like six men on a roof, and it wasn't for a new Playboy photo shoot. Also, Dr. Octavius turned evil finally, as we have seen his decline the entire game. Not a shocker with that hairline. So now the entire city is basically just burning, and we get every single crime unlocked now, meaning it's the end game, and we can finally finish up the game's 100% completion. So I went out and did a few of the new outposts, which just consist of criminals on rooftops, for whatever reason. I shot a trip mine web and got a trophy since they are fun to spam at enemies. Spider-Man decides to go 1v2 Electro and Vulture, and he does so fairly easily, which is impressive since the man has been quite literally abused in the past 24 hours by lots of people. In fact, I am so tired, I just take a nap on a rooftop since the man hasn't slept in like a week, and they gave me a trophy for sleeping since it's a necessary requirement of the human function. I went and did a lot of side objectives so I could get more upgrade tokens, and I fully leveled up all my gadgets, then I fully upgraded my skill tree. Finally, I think I'm ready to take on more men. Whoa, calm down, Jamal. So I went and fought Rhino and Scorpion, which are the next interracial couple we like to meet with on occasion for fun times. They love each other so much we let them have sexy time inside of a shipping container surrounded by police. God, I love self-expression. It's so beautiful. And then we reached the last mission of the game, beating Martin Lee and Dr. Octopussy. Martin Lee isn't even that hard of a fight. I'm not sure how he has this power, but he's got this weird ass energy thing going on. I don't know what bit him, but it sure wasn't a radioactive spider. Maybe it was a stripper who goes by the name of Hershey, but that's just a theory. What? What does that even mean? After a wild acid trip into his mind, we beat him and basically right after Dr. Octopussy shows up for a little round two. I, however, needed to go rub one out. I even went and made an entire new suit with the glorious post-nut clarity I just received. So now that we have our inclusive black suit, I go and fight the final boss of the game. And Dr. Octopussy is fairly easy since his weakness is giant objects being thrown at his head, like most normal people. We end up beating him and leaving him to the police and for prison to do with him what it does to most pump men of his age. The anti-serum we gather from Dr. Octopussy is used to make a cure for everyone in the city, but it's too late to save Auntie May, and she dies right in front of us in one of the most emotional moments in any video game I've ever played. Truly wonderful seeing a man cry for the first time. But I'm also convinced she is MJ's mom because they literally look the same, so I don't know what in the Alabama cousin king is going on here. Since I did most of the collectibles throughout the game, all I had to do now was go in and finish off a few outposts I didn't do, and then painfully complete every crime in each district district, which was an absolutely agonizing task, and took me like three hours. But I finally did them all and then greeted some civilians, visited Uncle Ben's grave since he is indeed still dead, and I bought all the suits and then completed a bunch of busy work Dr. Octopussy left for us since we won't ever get another job recommendation again. Finally receiving the Platinum Trophy for being greater than all those peasants out there who can't even shoot webs out of three places in their bodies. Holy